Hey guys, this is Brian Mounts, RunTorqueMechanic.com, and today we're going to be talking about those grass pots back there. Where are they? Are they? I can't point. I've got perennial rye in pots, and I've got turf type tall fescue in pots. I want to explain to you, um, in a real world, I mean, I'm just a lawn owner, a homeowner here, um, what the difference is between these things. So if you're planning on putting seed down, or maybe doing a full home renovation, uh, yard renovation, you got these grass types to choose from. Uh, up north. Now there's a couple others out there, but we're only going to be talking about these in this video. Perennial rye and turf type tall fescue. What's the difference? All right, here on my lawn, like my actual main lawn, I have a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye. Now these two grass types are blended together quite a bit in lawns because they are very similar and a bit complementary. They're actually kind of hard to identify in a lawn when they're mixed together, but you can. So I have pulled and isolated this one little grass blade out right there. That is perennial rye. Right next to it, this long blade is also perennial rye. Now, let me come over to my grass pots. I have two perennial ryes right here. They look different, but they are exactly the same. Planted in the same soil, and uh, they are the same age. The difference is this one is cut shorter, and it's in a smaller pot. This one's cut taller, uh, and it's in a bigger pot. So this one, just for whatever reason, uh, has darkened up a little bit more, um, probably because of the way that I've tended to the pots. I've tended the pots similarly. This is a very soft grass extremely soft you could sleep on this same thing with this even though it's a little bit shorter it's a little bit more stubby when it's short uh, prickly uh, when it's short when it's tall man this thing is fluffy now over here i've got turf type tall fescue now on top i've got a couple little things i'll get to those turf type tall fescue is the turf version of Kentucky 31 tall fescue. Kentucky 31 pre-existed before turf type tall fescue. Turf type tall fescue was developed, I want to say it was somewhere in the 1970s. Perennial rye evolved, not evolved, but it was it was derived from annual rye grass uh, back in the 1960s. So perennial rye as a turf grass is a little bit older than turf type tall fescue. Both of them are supposed to be lawn like turf improvements over their predecessors, which of course we can still put in the lawn. Some people do put annual rye grass in the lawn, especially down south if they're doing an overseed uh, in a super warm climate. Or for uh, construction sites where they're doing like uh, erosion control, things like that, you can put per, uh, annual rye grass down. But anyway, uh, that's beside the point. Turf type tall fescue is more rough. It just is more rough. Now, Kentucky 31 is even more rough than this, but this is more rough. Now, it's still not, it's not gonna feel bad if you're walking on it barefoot and it doesn't feel scratchy or anything like that, but you can tell a notable difference between this. And the reason for that, well, there's probably multiple reasons, but one of the reasons for that is that there is texture on both the front and back side of the leaf blades of turf type tall fescue. Now this is a pot, a small pot of Kentucky 31. The texturing is even more pronounced here and the blades are wider and more coarse. So this one is even less uh, pleasant to the foot. Now this is found in many lawns because this is an older grass type. So a lot of old lawns have Kentucky 31. You can still buy this at the store. It is cheaper than turf type tall fescue, but it is an inferior grass type. This has more heat tolerance and drought tolerance than Kentucky 31. And to get back to our comparison here, perennial rye is more of a delicate grass. So perennial rye, even though it's a cold season grass, just like turf type tall fescue, perennial rye is going to do better in climates that don't get so hot and climates that don't get so cold. Perennial rye is also going to want, want and enjoy having more water than turf type tall fescue. Now you can put water on turf type, but it doesn't need it. And that's because the root systems for this will go significantly deeper than the vast majority of uh, residential turf lawn varieties. 
Turf type tall fescue can have extremely deep roots and the like the topsoil in lawns that you'll find across America are almost never deep enough um, for this type. Now, perennial rye will have shallower root systems, but most residential lawns are gonna have topsoil that is plenty deep enough for these roots to go the whole way through. So it's really not a big deal unless you're doing a controlled environment where you're trying to get like, you know, two foot roots and trying to match it with this. Like you're gonna have a hard time matching it. Nobody has topsoil that's like two feet th thick. Now, both of these are bunch type grasses. So you're gonna find if you plant this or this, that if you ever have a blemish in the lawn, a hole, let's say you've got a burn spot, look at this over here. My dog peed here in the spring and I got like this little hole here. Now the Kentucky bluegrass is gonna slowly build in, but if this was a straight perennial rye lawn, I would have to overseed this spot because it would never fill in. Uh, same thing if I had tall fescue or turf type or Kentucky 31, that hole would never fill in. So both of these grass types are going to benefit from overseeding every single fall, like in the early fall. Because you're running these in cold season climates, you're most likely going to be doing your overseeding at the end of August, beginning of September. Warm season stuff, you know, I mean, it stays hot further into the year. If you go down south towards like, you know, Georgia and South Carolina and whatnot. Now, if you wanna identify both of these, because they come, because they bunch. So here is a good example right here. This comes up as a nice little stalk. And then we get these little things coming off, it keeps growing. And if I grab the one that I pulled off right here, you'll see at the bottom of it, it's got this little like purpley red magenta color almost all perennial rye is gonna have that. It's at the super duper bottom below all of the, the leafing that happens. You're also gonna find, it's hard to do this on camera, but you're gonna find that if you look down on it, this top leaf that's sticking up straight into the camera right there uh, is folded at the base. I don't know if I can get that on video, but it's folded at the base. Uh, that is a telltale sign of perennial rye right there. You're also going to find that these blades, you see how this blade right here is shiny? One side is shiny, and the other side is matte. And there's a reason why people with, uh, with perennial rye can stripe their lawns so well, you know, like get those like baseball field lawn stripes coloration. It's because one side of the grass blade is shiny and the other side is matte. So if you lay it down like this, you're seeing more matte. If you lay it down the other way, you're seeing more shiny. So if that's important to you, you're gonna get a lot of that out of this. You're gonna get a lot less of that capability with tall fescue. The reason for that is both sides of the blades look pretty much the same. They both have kind of the same texturing. Uh, your blades are a little bit wider, but here is one of the small bunches that I pulled out this morning. You're gonna find this uh, to be notably different. This is one reason why, let me put it somewhere where we can see contrast the shadow here. You're gonna see a lot of browning down here. Now this is common, so the leaf blade grows up, new leaf blades come, new leaf blades, and the older ones start dying off. And you end up getting all of this down here. Turf type tall fescue and Kentucky 31 tall fescue are usually grown much taller. And if you start cutting it too short, then you're gonna be cutting it down into this area down here. So you're gonna start seeing lots of brown in your grass and uh, you're getting down into the thicker part of these blades that is not going to feel as pleasant to the hand or the foot. So 
most people cut it up high. Now you don't necessarily have to dethatch very often with this because there are no rhizomes or stolons in this plant, just like there are no rhizomes and stolons in perennial rye, but you are gonna have more debris in your fescue because of this regular die off that happens. You're also gonna find leaf blade tips. This is another hard one to show on camera. That's a new leaf blade right there that I have not cut with, with the mower or scissors. See how it just kind of, kind of goes up to a small point. Whereas the perennial rye, again, this one's actually kind of hard to show because it's still so young, the one that I pulled off. This one's gonna be a little bit more folded. Remember I said that it comes out of the center stalk there. Stalk isn't the correct term to use but as it comes out of this center it goes up it comes out folded as it goes up it starts flattening out uh, depending on how tall the grass is you're gonna see that fold go all the way to the top you can kind of see it in that one right there in the middle kind of Anyway, to reiterate the main points here, perennial rye is going to do better. Let me get the lighting better on my face. People want to see me. Um, the main takeaway here is perennial rye is a softer grass and it's better for more uh, consistent, uh, delicate climates. So coastal regions frequently. I live up here in Oregon. This stuff was rigid in the 60s. I think it was made up here in Oregon. It's still made a ton. Like they grow seed up here all the time. Uh, in fact, this variety right here that I'm growing is just from, I don't know, 150 miles away from my house where they produce it. Anyway, you're going to find perennial rye a lot in kind of the coastal western Oregon and Washington because it's never really that cold up here. And most places don't ever really get that hot in the summer. It does really good. Plus, it's really moist up here all the time. Not exactly where I live. I live eastern Oregon where it's more desert-like. Um, but it still does pretty good here with good irrigation. Turf type tall fescue is going to do a lot better as you move further south into the transition zone where you have hot temperatures. So if you are living in a place that gets consistently hot in the summer for, you know, a couple months straight, you're going to find better results with turf type tall fescue than perennial rye. You're also not really going to want to mix them together because they're very different. Now, if you're located further up north, maybe in a harsher cold environment, I don't know, maybe uh, like a Montana or a Minnesota or... I don't know, you live in Buffalo or even, even Canada. Uh, these places will get much colder. I mean, you get polar vortex up there. Uh, perennial rye is a cold season grass. It will probably last, um, but it doesn't have quite the cold tolerance of the other cold season grasses like your fescues and your KBGs. Now, KBG is the other cold season grass that I'm not really talking about here. It's in my lawn along with perennial rye. So I'm going to get to that in another video uh, soon because lots of people are looking for information on seed in the spring. Uh, they should be looking for information on seed in the fall. So uh, hopefully this video will be relevant for uh, a good long time throughout the year. Uh, I hope that you found this video helpful. Uh, if you're considering putting Kentucky bluegrass down, wait a few days to a few weeks i'll have a video coming out on that and up here is a video all about fescue and caring for it take a look at it if you choose to go the tall fescue route thanks